so delighted that you bundled up and joined us for worship. Just a reminder that the Bible um, says, uh, Paul tells us not to be lukewarm Christians. So uh, no lukewarm, maybe some cold Christians today, but uh, please don't be lukewarm. So we hope to warm you up here um, in body and spirit. So thanks for joining us this morning for worship. Just a quick note, the annual meeting of the congregation is coming up after worship on Sunday, January 28th. You do not want to miss the fun that is an annual meeting for a congregation. So join us for that. Please join me in our uh, call to worship. We will begin with uh, singing hymn number 74. On this Epiphany Sunday, please join me in the call to worship. We come to worship today as wise men and wise women seeking a Savior. We come as people who have looked for stars and signs. We want to know God is with us. We come tired from the long journeys of life. The blessing of Christmas is this. You are not alone. In Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God has come to be with us. God is in this place. Let us worship the newborn King.
The Bible tells us that God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. So join me in the prayer of confession. I will start and then you begin on the next page. Gracious God, we would like to be among those who saw the coming of the Christ child, those who dropped all that they were doing and traveled to worship the coming of God's love into this world. We would like to be those who cared for God in infant vulnerability, who tickled and cuddled and comforted the growing child that he might know love and safety. And yet, merciful God, we must recognize all the times we are more like King Herod. Whenever we, in our actions or in our inactions, find our own need for control more compelling than the needs of others for health and safety, whenever we cling to the security of our privilege rather than standing up for the rights of the oppressed, whenever we are complicit in the harming of innocence for the sake of profit or power or because we fear to know and to change the injustices of this world. Loving God, we confess our sins against you and one another and pray that you will fill us with your light, that we may live our lives as true disciples in your name without counting the cost. In the name of Christ, the one who showed us the way, we pray. Hear the good news. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Today's first scripture reading is from Matthew um, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. I'll be reading from the NLT, so it might be a little different than the screen. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod, Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. 
And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. While Jim's uh, getting to the appropriate place, I just wanted to thank you really quickly for uh, coming out yesterday and helping us de christmas -tize the church. What, uh, everybody uh, showed up and had a donut and some coffee or whatever and helped a lot. And we were done in like less than an hour and a half. So thank you very much. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. When I was a seeker, I sought both night and day. I sought the Lord to help me. Showed me the way. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds fought and trembled, and lo, above the earth rang out the angel chorus and hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born down in a lowly manger. The humble Christ was born, and God sent a salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Thank you, Carla. At this time, I invite the children forward for the children's message. Come on up, guys. I'm going to sit here today. Oh, perfect. Good. Okay, this is good. Hey, good morning. I'm happy you're here. Come close because you're going to want to see what's in this box. You'll be able to see it. I brought with me to show you today gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This, do you know what, who, do you know who brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh to Jesus? Just yell it out. Who brought the gold, frankincense, Wise and myrrh? Men. Wise men. That's right. Bingo. This is what they brought. And I'm not sure if you've seen gold, frankincense, and myrrh before. So this, this yellow stuff, um, this is frankincense. And if you smell it, it smells like 
tree sap. You can smell it. It's okay. You can smell it. Have a smell. It smells like tree sap because it is tree sap. But the thing is, it's very expensive tree sap. So this is what they brought Jesus. Have a sniff. And if we threw this, like, into a wood-burning fireplace, it would be super smelly. You could really smell it. So um, you can have a smell of that. Awesome. Good. Okay. And um, this is gold. Now, this isn't like a bar of gold, right? These are just pieces of gold. But if I shake it up, you can see all the bits of gold in there. You can look at that for a second. Here, you can put your little things in this bucket. Perfect. And I'll show you the gold in a second. Yep. Yep. So they brought gold, and gold is right, really expensive, but frankincense, the stuff we just smelled, is, would, would have been even more expensive than gold for Jesus. Okay, this is myrrh, and you can't really smell it because it doesn't actually smell like anything, but you can test it out and see if it smells like anything. It's also tree sap, very expensive tree sap, and um, myrrh back in the day was maybe used for preparing bodies for burial, where frankincense was used for um like in the temple because it smelled good yeah see it doesn't smell like too much does it awesome do you want to see the gold so gold frankincense and myrrh this is what they brought to jesus and the point is it was really expensive so this stuff isn't very expensive today we know that gold is expensive but um frankincense and myrrh would have been as expensive as gold if not more expensive and so those wise men brought some very expensive gifts to Jesus. Now, we don't know, we just sang that Three Kings song. We don't know if, um, you know, the reason they were given these gifts was because it told us that Jesus was going to be buried one day and that Jesus was a king. Maybe that's some nice poetry. Maybe that's what Matthew wanted us to know. Or maybe Matthew just wanted us to know that the wise men brought some really expensive gifts to Jesus. And those expensive gifts might have even helped them um, heal from what they were going through. Maybe Mary used some of it, or maybe they could use it to um, get some money to go to Egypt when they had to flee to Egypt later. So um, we don't know exactly why they brought these gifts, but we know that they wanted to bring expensive gifts to Jesus to worship this king. You know, this church is here because they have, there have been thousands of people over hundreds of years who also brought Jesus their best stuff. And they brought their money, and they brought their time, and all of their gifts for singing and fixing stuff. And all of that is a way we can worship Jesus just like the wise people. So uh, Jesus loves frankincense, gold, and myrrh, but Jesus also loves when we sing and when we pray and when we help at the church and when we help things happen here at Trinity. So um, I'm going to leave this up here on the piano bench so you can look at it after worship if you want to. So all right, let's pray. God, the wise men brought some expensive gifts to worship Jesus. We have gifts too, gifts of money, gifts of time and energy, the talents you have given us and the things we're good at. Um, help us be like the wise people and bring our great gifts to you as well. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for coming today. I was worried I'd have no friends and you all were here, so thanks. See you later. Thanks for giving all the gifts that you give to the ministry of Jesus Christ through Trinity. Um, we especially appreciate your money today, which helps us pay for stuff like heat, which happens to be really important on mornings like this. So thanks for your generosity.
Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Thank you for the opportunity to lay gifts at your side, Lord. Thank you for the talents, for the energy, for the monetary gifts given to this church, not just on this day, but every day of the year. Bless that which we give, Lord, that it might bring you glory and be used for your kingdom. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, the newborn Savior, we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Amazing and loving God, it is only the second week after Christmas, only a few days into the new year, and yet we are tired already, God. The arrival of the Magi and even the mystery of the Word made flesh are not quite enough to shake us loose from daily stresses and the spiritual doldrums. But we are trying, Lord. We are honestly trying to savor the wonder of it all. And so as we are wandering and wondering about your work in our lives, hear us as we pray to you today. Lord, we lift to you today those who are cold. And we give special thanks for those who are helping cold people today. We lift up to you those who are moving through a season of grief. We remember all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, we pray for those who need a glimmer of light and the hope of new things to come. We pray for our broken and estranged relationships. We pray for ourselves and the hurts we are carrying today. 
We remember those who are recovering from a medical procedure, those who are anticipating one, and those who are anxiously awaiting a test result. Lord, hear our prayers for the military and their families, that they might know your peace. We are thankful for male people, Lord, who bring good tidings of great joy to our mailbox in all the seasons of the year. Lord, we lift up leaders throughout the world that they would make wise decisions for all people. We remember those caring for a loved one. We give special thanks for the youth and teenagers in our congregation today, Lord. And we remember those whose holiday was filled with hurt or disappointment or family stress. Lord, send your abiding light into our lives to heal us. Make us all wise men and wise women. Lead your people with consolation to that place of peace where our hearts are at home, where rivers flow clear, where snow dances in your praise, and where your grace is ever lavish. All of this we lift up to the light of Jesus Christ, your Savior, using the words he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to continue where Dana left off. So our scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 13. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Now after they had left, that being the wise men, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask for eyes to see and ears to hear your will, and your way for us this day. It's in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Have you ever had to go home by another road? Ever have to get back home by a different way than the way you planned? I'm sure that you have. It has happened to the Crayleys a lot. After last Christmas, we were trying to fly back home to Austin, Texas, halfway to the Pittsburgh airport. Our flight was canceled, totally canceled. We had to pull over, rebook, and then ask my parents to drive us to the Columbus airport so we could fly through Washington, Dulles to get to Dallas. We rented a rental car at 1 a.m. in the morning, drove three and a half hours home to Austin. Home by another way is never a fun ordeal. There's also a time Rocky and I were in good old West Virginia, and uh, we were just dating. Rocky hates to sit in traffic on the highway. That's like a no-go for him. And so we hit this big backup on the highway coming home from West Virginia, and Rocky gets out the paper map because there's no GPS back in those days, and he surmises that if we just take this little detour away from the highway, we can get back on, you know, avoiding all traffic. It was a two-hour detour. We went through parts of West Virginia I never wanted to see and don't ever want to see again. And at one point, we're on like a dirt road trying to get back to the highway. And I just thought, man, we're, I'm never going to see home again. This is where it all ends, right here in a car with my boyfriend and his family's Pomeranian dog, right? So... Wow, home by another way, it's never fun. 
the wise folk, the wise guys, have to go home by another way, we're told. Their story starts when they see Jesus' star at its rising. So they see the star. They go to Bethlehem, right? They go to kneel down and worship this amazing baby. But on the way to see baby Jesus, they stop at King Herod's palace. King Herod, a.k.a. Dr. Evil. Okay, so they stop, and Herod says, Hey, uh, could you go and find this king whose star is on the rise? And um, come on back. Let me know where he is so I may pay homage to him, so I may worship him. Yeah, right. He wanted to kill little baby Jesus. That's what Herod was all about. But the wise men didn't know this, so they headed off, right, knelt down, worshipped baby Jesus, brought their gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It's kind of a beautiful biblical image that we're given from Matthew. And then, luckily for Jesus and the Holy Family, they are warned in a dream to not return home the way they were supposed to. They were warned in a dream to return home by another way. And so we're told they went home by another way or another road, depending on your translation. Home by another way. We normally just fly through that statement, but that's a really thought-provoking idea for the wise people and for all of us. Can you imagine how annoying it would have been to have to go home by a different way? What do we know about the wise men? Not much, actually. We don't know if there were two or 15 or three like the song or 72. We just know that they were there. There were some wise folk. We know that it took them a long time to get to Jesus. They didn't arrive till two years after his birth, scholars tell us. So we don't know how long the trip is, but we know they came from faraway land. So it was a long trip. So when you take a long trip, having to go home by another way is not fun because they probably had already marked on their maps like all the best rest stops, all the best oasises for the camels, where, you know, the food was, and now they got to go home by a different way. And you know how it is. There was probably arguments about which another way they should take and which restaurants they should stop at on the way home. Home by another way, not fun, even for wise folk. Home by another way hard stuff. It surprises me, actually, that the wise people were sent home by another way because they were the wise men, the wise folk. I mean, if anyone shouldn't have to go home by another way, it's the wise men of the Bible. Not to mention that they had just had a Jesus moment, right? I mean, they just, they had their Jesus time. They just came face to face with the holy child. Normally, when you have a Jesus moment, you expect everything to go really well after. And then there were the gifts. These guys just made the biggest donation to the ministry of Jesus Christ, like ever, okay? You would think everything would go pretty well for them in the coming days, right? But sorry, no health and wealth gospel here. I would love, as a pastor, to be able to tell you that if you just follow Jesus and give lots of money to the church, you're good to go. Like, I would, I would love it if I could tell you that. That would be awesome. But I can't, right? I mean, that's just not how life works. We'd like to think that if we faithfully follow Jesus, everything's going to go perfectly in our lives. We'd like to think if we faithfully follow Jesus, give our time and talents to the ministry of God's kingdom that God will protect us from the suffering of this life. But it's just not true. I would love to tell you that life works that way, but you know it doesn't. So we know that the Christian life is one of great joy. The Bible says that, and I hope you're experiencing that in your life, right? The psalmists especially talk about the joy we find in following Jesus in our lives. But then there's the book of Ecclesiastes that says, Time and chance happen to us all. Sometimes life happens, and it's not our fault. There was nothing we did to cause it or prevent it. Sometimes life happens and God didn't cause it. Life happens. 
hurt happens. And suddenly we find ourselves going home by another way. Maybe our kids move out of the house or back in the house. Maybe our kids are in a new stage of life and now we've got to learn how to parent all over again. We just figured this out and now they're different. Maybe we have a job we dislike. Maybe there's a relationship that's in turmoil in our life, right? And we lack peace. We're looking for peace in our life. That's what it means to go home by a different way. We're looking for that peace of a heart at home. Maybe we're moving through a grief process. Maybe something has happened in our life where we feel like we've lost a part of ourselves. Losing someone can cause that. Losing a job can cause that. Maybe just a new season of life like retirement or having kids. And we feel like we've lost a piece of ourselves. We feel lost in our own life. And so when I talk about going home by another way, the home I'm talking about isn't your physical home. I'm talking about your heart at home, right? Your happy place where all is merry and bright. And when that stuff in life happens, that tough stuff happens, our hearts are no longer at home. We don't have that heavenly peace. We don't have that happy place in our hearts anymore. And we discover that in order to get back to that place of peace, of orientation, of goodness in our life, we're going to have to go home by another way. Sometimes to get your heart back at home, you've got to go home by another way. And the wise people remind us of that today. If that's you today, it's okay. If you discover that you are trying to get home by a different way, it's okay. And you probably didn't do anything to cause it. And God probably didn't do anything to cause it. It just is. It's just a part of life. And so if that's you, good news, number one, God is with you, and so are we. God is with you. The cool stuff that happened in Matthew chapter 2, I think, isn't just wise men in awesome, you know, outfits going to see the baby with their gifts. The cool stuff happening in Matthew is behind the scenes, right? God is this silent, quiet worker, abiding, protecting, guiding, pointing the way right? Putting a star in the sky because the wise folk spoke star language. And so they're like, oh, we need to go somewhere. And then God quietly works in the background, warning them in a dream to go home by a different way in order to protect their safety and the safety of baby Jesus and the holy family. You know, it wasn't just the wise men that have to go home by a different way in the story. It's, well, it's the holy family too, right? Because what part did I read to you? I read about The holy family now has to pick up and move to Egypt, make a new home, find home in a new way, in that way. And so what does God do? God is working in the background, realizes the holy family and baby Jesus are in danger, sends an angel of the Lord to say, Joseph, get up, take the baby, take the family, get out, go to Egypt, be safe there. God is quietly working in that story. Sometimes we need to hear from our pastor that God's at work in your life even if you don't realize it, even if you can't see it, even if you can't feel it, even if you don't know what God's up to. God's still at work. There's this awesome Old Testament book called Ruth. In the book of Ruth, God is never mentioned, not a single mention of God in the entire book, but it's still in our Bibles. Why? Because it testifies to the beauty and the truth that God is always at work, redeeming our stories, even when we can't overtly see God's presence. God is with you, even on your road to a new way home. So, travelers, you're on the road, home by a different way. God is with you, but guess what? We are too, right? Churches are places that accompany people when they have to go home by another way. No matter what caused that circumstance, we are walking with you. Families are great, right? Families are wonderful. Some of us have great families. Some of us have broken families. Families are okay, but church is where it at. Church is where our communities of people who walk and accompany one another as we walk home by a different way. We pray with you. We sit with you. We take you out to lunch and listen to your story. We encourage you. We just try to get you to come to church even when you don't feel like it, right? Churches are communities 
that walk with one another, especially with people who are trying to get home by a different road. That's what we're all about. So maybe 2017 didn't end like you wanted to, right? There's nothing like the holidays or a Christmas Eve service to remind you that, well, not everything is merry and bright in my life this year. So maybe your New Year's off to a rough start. It's okay. God is with you. God is with you. Even if you can't see God's presence, God is with you, guiding you, protecting you, leading you home by another way. And guess what? We are too. So blessings on your journey. Let us pray. God, some of us today feel like we are lost in our own lives. That peace, that feeling of blessing and order has been wrecked by something or someone or a circumstance in our life. And frankly, we hate it. it makes us angry, makes us sad. We hate the struggle. And so God, show up. Continue to lead us home by another way. Continue to make us a church that walks with people as they find their way home by a new way. And send us stars, Lord, and signs and people to let us know that you are here, that you are with us, and that you abide with us every step of this holy journey. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Please stand and sing with us. Okay, travelers, find yourself going home by another road. No worries. God is with you, and we are too. So go out into this world and go in peace and have courage. Return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Care for those who suffer. Love and serve the Lord. In the name of the creating and redeeming and sustaining Lord, and let all God's people say, Alleluia. Amen.